For generations, entire communities relied on a cold weather skill so effective that it kept villages alive through brutal winters, crop failures, and supply cutoffs. Today, it's nearly vanished, yet it still works flawlessly. Before we unpack it, take a second and subscribe to Echoes of Survival so you never miss deep dives like this. Now, let's get into the real substance. The lost method of insulating homes using natural thermal mass was once the backbone of winter survival. Villages across the north understood that warmth wasn't created. It was preserved. Instead of fighting the cold, they engineered their homes to trap and slowly release heat using earth, stone, densely packed fibres and layered construction. This wasn't crude improvisation. It was deliberate, tested and refined across centuries. A well-built, earth-backed house held enough retained warmth from cooking fires and body heat to stay livable for days, even in sub-zero storms. Many early Norse and Slavic settlements survived long winters on this principle alone. Communities mastered the controlled layering of materials to slow heat loss. The outer layer absorbed wind impact. The middle layer trapped air pockets, the most vital part of insulation. The inner layer reflected warmth back into the living space. The system functioned like a natural thermos, and it required no modern equipment. A family could reinforce a home in a single day if winter struck early. The method was so trusted that travellers in Siberia and the northern steppes often dug temporary semi-buried shelters using these same principles to keep from freezing overnight. The practice became even more precise with the use of heat sinks built from stone or packed clay. These were placed near the central hearth so they could absorb excess heat and release it long after the fire burned out. Many medieval households, you know, intentionally built masonry benches or thick internal walls for this very purpose. Archaeological evidence from northern Icelandic turf houses actually shows internal temperatures staying stable for hours without any fuel at all. That stability meant, well, fewer resources burned, fewer risks taken outside, and more lives preserved when storms isolated entire settlements. The same knowledge, interestingly enough, applies today with surprising ease. A modern survivalist can adapt the method using soil berms against wind-exposed walls, stacked stone along the interior to store heat, or even layered natural fibres in wall gaps. In an off-grid cabin, placing sealed containers of water near a heat source works as a contemporary heat sink because, well, water stores thermal energy extremely well. Even urban homeowners can benefit by using heavy curtains, interior brick features or insulated wall hangings, all direct descendants of this older technique. The principle stays the same. Slow the escape of warmth and maximise every bit of heat you produce. During severe winter blackouts, people who understand these older methods can maintain safe indoor temperatures long after modern heating systems fail. A simple example is lining the coldest wall with thick rugs or woven mats to create an air trapping barrier, a tactic used for centuries in Central Asia. Another is sleeping low 
and close together near a thermal mass, a practice common in Viking longhouses where warmth was conserved through proximity and architecture working together. This is the kind of knowledge that kept entire communities alive, and it still works today with remarkable effectiveness. If you value deep historical survival techniques like this, subscribe to Echoes of Survival and share this guide so more people can rediscover skills worth keeping alive.